<laughs> so, welcome to another exciting edition of the James Show. Uh, we're here today with Bree. Hey. And what do we got on the docket today? We're going to talk with Bree about all kinds of exciting, fun stuff. Uh, we're going to play a game called Beholder. You ever wanted to be Big Brother in 1984? Yeah. But on a small scale, just like monitor an apartment complex? Who doesn't want to do that and be creepy? That's exactly what this game is about. That's great. Um, you don't listen to this little creepy. Maybe. We're going to sing a song and talk about what happened last time in Dungeons and Dragons. All on this exciting episode. Can you handle it? Yeah! Can you feel the magic? Is that what that feeling was? No, that was um, the, a short in the electrical system. You probably shot it close to that printer. Ooh. Anyhow, <laughs> Bree, what kind of Thanksgiving did you have? We had delicious prime rib. That's our new thing that we did. We've been doing that for a couple of years. And I basically ate steak. That's pretty much what I did. Was I ate steak. I ate a little bit of I ate some mashed potatoes because I love mashed potatoes. And I tasted the dressing. That was pretty good. But I didn't have time for that. That's that's southern stuff and for y'all who don't know. And I just didn't have time. No time but for anything but steak. Me and David went to my mom's house. Stacy stayed home with the pukey sick baby. That sounds fun. Mm -hmm. Puke. And then David was a jerk. He was being a poop. There was a toy on the ground. We told him he had to pick it up. And he was like, nah. Oh, so and he would stand right next to it and just be like, eh. So I picked the toy up and I threw it away. And then I picked him up, up. I told him he needed to go time out. He said no. So before he even realized what happened, I picked him up upside down, gave him a little squat, but you know, nothing. You had a quick butt squat. That's good. And then I said, <laughs> he was just more crying and surprised. And just He's like, like what right? happened? So I didn't even time out. And then he didn't want to get up from time out. I said, do you want to say you're sorry and get up from time out? <laughs> so that's how he spent most of his Thanksgiving. That sounds like a great Thanksgiving. I kind of spent mine, I spent mine in my room having too. <laughs> but uh, the food we had was good. We got the you know, traditional turkey, collards, stuffing. Mm, nice. I made green bean casserole. It was pretty good. We, we did have green bean casserole. ate a little bit of that. I uh, did my homemade version without the cream of mushroom soup. I made my own cream of mushroom oh, soup to put in cool. it. So the sodium count was way down versus That's really the cool. Campbell's Yeah. Slab. It probably tastes better, too, That's just because awesome. it wasn't so... Yep. Uh, so the, it has, what, just mushrooms... Cream, actually half and half is probably better. It is what I use for that because it makes it thinner to spread across. Some chicken broth, some garlic, nutmeg, salt, pepper, mushrooms, if I didn't say that, obviously. Yeah, well, I mean, it's mushroom soup. Yeah. So uh, that went well. On to some more exciting interview style stuff. What's the, f when you think of colors and you associate them with a smell, what's the best, like, color to smell? Like, when you think of a color, that comes with a smell. You don't need to tell me what the smell is, but what's the color that has a smell? Red. Red. Red is my favorite color. But, and you associate that with the nicest smells? Yeah, red and things, variations of red. Especially what is the first thing you think of when you think of smells of red? Apples and cinnamon. You know what I first thing I thought of was? Cinnamon, basically. Those red hot fireballs. So like, you used to get in Halloween. Oh my like, god, I totally had, like, had one this, like, right in my house right before I left. I almost grabbed it and brought it with me. I wish I had it just to give to you right now. <laughs> oh, well. Um, what's the best color for, like, you know, a wild animal? Like, as a pet? Or, like, just whatever. Or just makes me think of wild animals. Just whatever. What do you think? Animals, uh, if, if every animal was this color, I would be okay. I wouldn't be thrilled because, you know, little variety is kind of nice. But. Kind of like a dark, like, kind of like brown, topish kind of color. Like, variations of that, that would be chill. Because then when your dog doesn't get horribly dirty. But, kind of like a light chocolate lab kind of yeah, color. Yeah, we're like, yeah, because it's a pretty color anyway, and there's a lot of variation in it. And, but like, they don't, don't see the dirt, because dogs are gross, man. They roll around everything, and most people who are cool have dogs. Just saying. Not a cat person. I got kids. And a house. That's, the dogs and kids are not the same. No. Do never think that. Get a puppy. We can do one or the other. Get um, a puppy. The, uh, Don't get a kid. Get a I'm puppy. thinking that I would prefer, I guess it depends on where I live. If I lived in Australia, I'd prefer every animal in the world to be some variation of day glow green because there's too many crazy weird animals in so Australia. So at night, so, how so you so can no see. What, you can always see you know, what's coming. 
<laughs> I mean, um, yeah, because flying foxes, man, that is why I never want to go. Um, and... I'm worried about it. The area where flying foxes are, I can't go. Yeah. You know, you get they're as tall the as me. And they're going to fly over and bite you in the face. They're going to fly up next to me. Just them sitting next to me is gross. Because they're going like, to be walking on a bridge and, and just, oh my god, or swoop down and pick me up thinking I'm something else and take me away. I don't want that. No. No one wants that. Otherwise, I don't know. I'm still going to go to Daglo and Neon. There's, there's crazy ass shit around here, I don't feel like. Yeah, spiders, you would be able to always see them. Slugs, you know, you don't ever step on something, you're walking down as a thing. Ugh. Especially if you're barefoot, that's worse. Yeah, those are gross. What's the best time of day to ask somebody on a date? Like, to go on a date or the time of day to ask? To ask, like, for the future. Like, hey, it's Saturday, we're going to go do something. You, me, bottle of wine. 42 of our closest friends, you know, if you're Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like actually like lunchtime is the best time to make business deals like that, which is really what a date is. is yeah, is I think so. Up. I was just thinking that too, because you don't want to do it. I mean, after dinner, then it's almost like you were already on a date and you just ran into it. They could be on a date. Lunch, especially like right after lunch, before they feel like dead tired or whatever, but right. they're, not, they're not peckish. They're, they're in a good mood. They had themselves a hot dog and some right. tea and... You want to talk to someone after they're full and kind of happy because then they associate that feeling with you. There you go. Yep. We agree. Yeah. That's weird. The world's in it for real, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> so what sort of games have you been playing recently? Um, I haven't gotten a play since I've not worked in the past two days, which is sad because I thought that's what I was going to do for the next four days. Um, but my mother had other plans. Um, but I pulled out Thief to play it because I've not finished the game one? yet. Yeah, so I like that game one a lot. And I like Feet Thief, and I would love to play it mostly because I love being rogue of any sort, which you know. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, some of the early, early ones, you couldn't even like really kill anybody at all. Like, you couldn't hurt yeah, them even. Like but these ones here, you can if you want to, but it's still mostly about sneaking around and doing sneaky, sneaky thief stuff. You're stealing things. Yep. I like that game. I got it on. What do you have? What do you play it on the PlayStation? Um, yes, I have it on PlayStation, and I actually have an Xbox. I got it on my PlayStation. Like four or three? I don't remember which one. Yeah, make my four. I'm going on Xbox first. <laughs> um, first instinct: rock, paper, scissors. It's usually rock. Um, uh, I try to vary it. But it's usually rock, I can't but think like the rest of like depending on what it also depends on the person. Certain yeah. personality types, I automatically throw scissors because I know I should. There was a there was a guy that uh, well we used to do uh, the live action role playing the vampire the, especially early edition rules it was rock paper scissors to win you, you, there was other factors but this guy could never figure out why everyone always beat him he always threw scissors first always no matter what even if we told him like earlier he'd That's forget true. and he'd still throw scissors later it's just like. I, I don't get people who do that because if I know that's what you do and I say it right before we go. So well, yeah, oh, no, we don't tell them right before we go. We just mention, like, at the end of the game, he's complaining. But, but there are people but, who still do. They're yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And they do it. And then I straight up and get they're, they're trying to, like, double flay fake you or whatever. But, you know, you just But don't. you're basic. <laughs> when you're the dumbest, you can't fake people. All right. Yeah, I know. You have to pick one. There's only two options. Sure. Root beer or cream soda? Cream soda. 100%. God, she's gross. gross. I, can't with, I can't with root beer. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand why you want to eat that. <laughs> it's eating it because it tastes like your carpet weird. Like cream soda is any different. It's just horrible. It's horrible. Root beer is horrible. It's like ground carpet in a can, liquefied. I don't know. That's weird. Yeah. Now I'm going to drink my root beer later. I'm going to be thinking about like little bits of carpet fuzz. Yeah, but like made from the earth because it's ground carpet. That's why I said it that way. Okay, fine. We're thinking about little, like bit, little bits of slugs crawling. Yeah, place. it's kind of like bark, but not. Yeah, like um, Shrek, that dude would love it. <laughs> okay, so uh, sweaty pits, face or butt? You. What's worse in a social situation? What's worse? What's worse? You, you're only gonna have one of them, but what's the worst one? If you gotta have one, what's the one you definitely don't want in a social situation? Armpits. Armpits. You think a little bit of sweat on your forehead and face is okay? Because, like, yeah, your face, you can you can fix that. 
armpits is kind of like, like how you did that. You gotta do this, and then you just gotta like stand. Right, everyone knows, right. yeah. What and about, then like but, the bathroom, you can go to the bathroom, you can wipe your butt. Like honestly, all that you can fix. I'm that person. I will go to the bathroom and fix it if I need to. Yeah. Um, you gotta smell good. It's important. What about at home? You're just hanging out, and you don't really feel like taking a shower right now. You're in the middle of a great movie or whatever. Dude, so just go to the bathroom and wipe your ass better. It's all about. That's why you keep wipes. But see, you only have one. It just happens. You just sit there. It just happens. You just keep wipes at your house all the time. It's not about the remedy. It's which is the worst to have to deal with. Probably your butt if you're sitting down chilling at the house. Yeah, I agree. Because you feel it. <laughs> can you feel? Can you get a magic? Yeah, you you feel it. You just not love either. Anyhow, <laughs> what, so there mean? we go. Now we know all about sweaty kids and turkey day. Next. There are sweaty kids on turkey day. Uh, yeah, before we get to the game, let's go ahead and look at this Loot Crate. That sounds like a fun time. My hat looks like it came from Loot Crate. So, Loot Crate, this... Here, you can hold the box. Yay! Thank you. My lovely assistant slash co-host slash boss. I mean, what? Yeah, I run things. Uh, <laughs> so this time was kind of a mystic type thing. Let's have some cool stuff in it, though. Of course, we've got, first, uh, Brie doesn't care, a Harry Potter shirt. That's <laughs> about the new movie. I try to care. Not really. Yeah. Uh, you so, are in. It's kind of neat. Then we've got a cool ass Doctor Strange figure. You're gonna see that actually tonight. That's good. Hmm. Run out of space. I can do. Um, this is cool too. It's like a day, uh, like a, a day diary type thing. Okay. It's a uh, you know, the night is dark and full of terrors from Game of Thrones. Let's see, I mean, it's... Oh, it's just really cool. Yeah. So it's actually like, a, um, to keep up with like what you do and stuff. Yeah, it's like a day planner thing. It's got yeah, a, you know, it's got the little planner. notebook, day planner slash journal. You know. Yeah. The pin this time is for Elder Scrolls uh, Online. And it basically, if you buy the basic edition of the game, you have the pin, you go to the extra loot thing, it will uh, give you the enhanced extra cool version and the pin is you know a little ring from the uh the symbol for the game we have a comic uh big trouble in little china and escape from new york crossover it's the same actor who played the main character in both oh my goodness that sounds so epic yeah crazy. it sounds like the 80s like exploded all over yeah yeah, yeah. Escape from New York and L.A. Stinky face. There were two. Peanut gallery needs to shut their peanut mouth. That was our resident 80s movie buff. Who was wrong? And she was wrong this time. It does not happen often. We like uh, it. Uh, of course, the magic, uh, ma the magazine for the issue as normal. There's all kinds of interesting. You know, they've actually enhanced this. It's pretty much like a freaking magazine now. I mean, there's yeah. like articles, little quizzes, stuff. It's kind of, yeah. It looks like it is like a little magazine. Now. It's a little magazine. It, I mean, it tells you about all the loot and stuff in addition to all kinds of other cool stuff. So, thank you. That was the loot crate this month. The shirt is, of course, my wife's. She has laid dibs to it. On all things that are yours. That all things that are mine and doubly on all things that are Harry Potter and mine. True. Now. I could have done that. You could have, but you know, you're not the labor. <laughs> the manager. Exactly. We're going to play a game called Beholder. Um, you don't wear hats for this? No, you don't wear hats for the game. You wear sunglasses for the game. Did you just you show me my hat? I forgot simple. my sunglasses in the car. I'm sad. I usually have them all the time. I'm going to be wearing my uh, Mr. Sunglasses NES Action glasses today. Um, this game is all about being a spy for the state. Um, if you remember Papers, Please, for those of you who have actually watched this show more than once in my life, it's the same kind of thing. It's a very totalitarian type state, and you're working for it. Um, do good, and they'll keep your family alive. Do not so good. Well, you kind of have to make choices. You have to pick who dies. Not really. Oops. Pretty chill. So, this is my guy. He's a nice little round guy. I like your little blob. And then these are all people that live in the house. Here's my daughter. Oh, you little blob, baby. Yeah. She wants me to play. Um, everybody in the house sleeps except for me. I'm giving you a, been, being given a drug by the state that makes me not sleep so that I can keep an eye on things. Here's all the different tasks. Like, this guy wants me to help him find a girlfriend. Um, this is actually a state mission, so I must protect Klaus. Blah, 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 Klaus. Um, here's government directives. These are different rules that they'll randomly impose. 
like uh, apples must be destroyed. It is illegal to store or consume them. Singing in front of the Ministry of Order is prohibited. Drugs is prohibited. It's illegal to use foreign currency. Just random, yeah. Um, these little things here, those are cameras. I can. What about the guy with the money? Okay. He sells uh, sometimes black market stuff, sometimes not. Sometimes it's good, sometimes so, it's bad. Basically, I have a camera. Cameras to help keep an eye on the citizens. And well, let's go see. We'll put a camera in here. But first, you have to do is you can't be spotted going in their house. So we're going to look in and see. Yeah. Look like anybody's home. Okay. So, oops, I missed it. Oh, that's not him coming home. Probably is. I'm gonna go ahead and put a camera right here. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, you, you just don't want to be in the room when they come back, right? Yeah. Um, let's see if we can get the oh, There you go, this guy wants a girlfriend, right? Oh, well, hey, there's a note for a chick, so let's uh, go ahead and give him a call. I think I can do a quick, quick little shuffle when you click on it. Huh? Because if you miss answering the phone when the ministry calls, that's very bad. Do they hurt you? Gonna dial this chick? Yes. Hello, my name's Carl, and I'm calling about your head. Tell me about yourself. Oh, really? No, no, it's for a friend. He's shy, so I'm helping you with his privates. He's a doctor. <laughs> a doctor? What's his name? Aloysius the little soul. Fact. She says, oh, I'll think about it. So. Yeah, something like that. And let's go see what this guy has for sale while we're at it. So he's got all kinds of stuff. Diaries, chocolate, ties, books, blues. Oh, this guy has a mission for me. Let's see what he wants. Oh, I don't have to knock this one out of his house. Okay, he has canned fish. Find him a buyer and he'll pay generously. Ask about the quality of the fish. Is it good fish or shit fish? It's the best quality, imported, blah, blah, blah. You found the canned food in the hold. Uh, nah, I'm not gonna accept this deal. Cause it's bad fish, he's trying it's to get probably, some. Probably, yeah, he's gonna get mad at me if I don't make, a, make enough money on it or something, bro. Right? That's this guy wanted. See, these are the public areas right here. Oh, their phone's ringing. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife wants soap and chocolate, but I have to answer the phone. It's ringing. Go, 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 go. Not answering the phone is bad. This is your reputation with the state, and that's your money. Oh, no, it's just looking for good lady. Uh, yeah, she's kind of a good girl. She's pretty mad now. So I'm gonna go tell them. Is that like, or is that like online dating, but like? I don't know. It's before the internet, so you know. Okay, he filed. I found a girlfriend for him. Uh, the girl from an ad. He can't wait to meet her. Here's her phone number. Call her. She's waiting. He wants me to find him a chocolate bar. Let's see if this guy's still selling stuff on the chocolate bar. Oops. Maybe he has soap for my wife too. Buy a chunk of my wife. That's jeans, candy, aspirin, ties. That looks like soap. Sorry. I'll knock on this guy's door. Oh, see these little bubbles above their heads? Um, you can use them to profile people. And if they've broken the law, you can actually turn them in. <laughs> It'll be red. Excuse me. If it's a if it's something that's a, a uh, an offense that you could get rid of them with. And it will be green if you just profile him. Let's see if I have anybody I can profile just to show that. Let's see if I have anybody with any information. No. Uh, yeah, Mark Rennett. So I go down to my little workstation here. Fast forward a little bit. And I'm going to profile a tenant. Mr. Mark, blah, blah, blah. He lives in, what is it, apartment three? Yep. Apartment three, male. Super old, 65. He is, I think, married. He lives with 
her, and his occupation is an archive employee. And then information I've collected there, see? So information you collect that you submit to the government is also worth money. Okay, this guy likes fishing. He's like, thank you for letting us know. Yep, so they can deal with him if they need to, when fishing becomes illegal. Um, up here you see there's two places that are empty. I can repair it. And then if there's someone available to move in, I could move them in there. Uh, that's pretty much the basics of the game. As the game goes on, like later on, uh, there's a chance like your daughter will get sick and you need $20,000. And so you gotta like maybe deal with that or you let her die or what. I mean, there's, there's different choices. You could be totally by the book uh, for the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, the game will play out that way. Or you can choose to like help the resistance or you can just kind of be a middleman where you help people when you feel like you need to, but you know, don't really get involved. So there's a bunch of different ways to play it. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can play it. And lots of interesting little things happen. Like a general might come, there's like a pop propaganda truck that'll come and you can learn how to defuse it or you can just like, play. Um, the only time I did play, both my daughter and my wife ended up dead, and my son ended up being, like, sold to the mines or something. You, like, traded your kid? He wanted to go away on a trip. He said he didn't like his school anymore, but he needed 10000 He kept bothering me, kept bothering me. He said, fine, fine. I gave him the money, I gave it to him, and it turns out that the place he was going was actually just, like, a oh, hard labor camp that he just volunteered and paid $10,000 to go join. So your kid's dumb. I guess. So it was okay that he was gone. Yeah, I guess probably was. It let me focus more on my work. And he learned something. <laughs> he learned <laughs> hard work sucks. And not to be a dumbass. But so I mean, it's it's kind of a simple game, but it's really neat, and it's there's lots of like little interactions and and uh, story with each characters. Um. And that's about all there is to the game. I mean, it's literally nice stuff. To eat yeah, it's stuff kind of goes along, and you can, like I said, choose to remain neutral. You can help the state. You can help the the resistance. Lots of crazy stuff happens. Uh, so, two plus two equals five. Two plus two equals five, and remember that joke. Mm -hmm. So that was Beholder. I like the game. It's neat. Yeah. It's uh, and of course you know it's like most of the games I I show on this. It's you know it's like twelve dollars, fifteen dollars at most. I like the you know. shadows. Yeah, I like the the graphic style. Kind of is. Need it's just kind of you know it's enough to get stuff across and like how they have little accessories that are white but for the most part they're still all just. But then again, that's almost like that's how the state looks at them all just this. Yeah. Things. And a little blob of information. Yep. So, I think it's time for a song. Do you have something to sing about? Well, or, I mean, or we can do another fan fun random completely random song that's Ooh. generated on the internet and like we have to sing Ooh. whatever the internet tells us to sing. That sounds terrifying. The internet is one of those things. Oh, last time I sang a song about how I made like boys. I was singing a song like, I'm on a date with my guru, and as the conversation lulls, I found my mind wandering about boys. Do I like girls or boys? I don't know. It's okay. Do I like, like boys more than girls? Maybe so. That's all right. <laughs> But it was a song. I'm not saying it was bad, I'm just saying it was a song. It's kind of silly. That's so, good. Dude. It could have been a sing along and you could have, like, here. taught little. What kind of theme do we want to hit up teach here? Teach middle schoolers about life. That's what you should do, James. Yeah, okay. Well, here, pick a theme here. I'm not going to be able to sing like they say it. Yeah, I was going to say One Direction because, like, that'd just be hilarious. But I think Beyonce knows. That's. that's... Right. Well, I don't know how many of her songs go, so I'm not going to sing it right when they generate it. That's okay. <sighs> I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna try and sing the words either way. Good. Okay, Beyonce. And we're gonna go total random. So we've got five adjectives, three singular nouns, four plural nouns, three body parts, two verbs, something that might uh, someone something somebody might make, something someone might feel, and find the name of our artist. Nick Poo Poo Pants. The third. Write me a song. Time for a hat. My song's called All the Poor Folks. Oh, and forks. All the poor fo forks. There you go, you're worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be wearing my Punisher Loot Crate hat today. I'm wearing the TARDIS because I can. The entire TARDIS, doctor and all, is inside her head right now. If she shakes too much, the doctor's like, Whoa, Clara! Yeah, I hate her. God. And now she's gone. Off into space with... That one chick from Game of Thrones slash 
the Viking place. Is she really? Who? You know she's what's on the right? Yeah. Remember, she's a shielder. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess this is supposed to be like to all the single lady, that single lady song. Yeah, I think so. It's all the poor forks, 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 all the poor forks. Now put your thighs up. Oh my God. <laughs> Every night I bleed in bed, <laughs> lost in a fairy tale. Can you hold my eyebrows and be my guide? <laughs> Hats filled with arms, cover your skies. What kind of dream is this? You can either be a chewy fishing rod or a pointy fairy, fairy, pointy fairy. Either way, I don't want to spin without you. Arms, we run this mother. Yeah, arms, we run this mother. Arms, yeah, so beautiful right now. Most, <laughs> most incredibly beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. Yes, beautiful right now. All the hats who are independent throw your ankles at me. All the hats who are making money throw your ankles at me. All the hats who feel truly jealous throw your ankles at me. Tonight I'll be your beautiful heart. Just know I'm calling all my arms. I know you want to be my ugly eyebrows. Tonight I'll be your beautiful heart. And I'm calling all my arms. <laughs> Who runs the world? Arms. Yeah, they run it. That's the end of that song. It literally had, like, all of her songs in it. It had freaking... <laughs> it's just kind of a It had, like, um, what is it? What's the what's the group she was in before? Where she was, it was really Beyonce and, and Kelly Knowles. And then poor Michelle. Damn. Okay, we're going to do a fully <laughs> randomized one because it'll be a little easier. We'll get the song length to be short and sweet, and the title is Short and Obscure, and we've randomized everything else. I like this. This is going to be good. Two friends, Matt and... I had a friend named Matt. She gets on with life as an interloper. She's a beautiful kind of gal. She likes practicing <laughs> guitar and playing computer games. <laughs> She likes to contemplate science, but when she starts to daydream, her mind turns to religion. Oh, oh, oh. She likes to use words like spend it in cheers. She likes to use words about science, but when she stops talking, her mind turns to religion. Oh, oh, oh. She likes hanging out with Matt and Bree, but when left alone, her mind turns to religion. She hates smelly farms and falling over, but she just thinks back to religion, and she's happy once again. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Discard this one. James was like, I don't like that song. No, I don't like those songs. I can't sing them well because I'm I mean, sight reading. Gonna, I'm not gonna, singing. I can't sing. We're more Beyonce. That's what I just decided. That <laughs> you need more Beyonce and Destiny's Child in your life. So there you go. Two mostly red sort of songs for you. Am I singing about a nun? Yeah, I know. She goes on a date and hangs out with friends, and then her mind turns. Hey, it's better than last time when it was their mind always turning to whether or not they like boys more than girls. Hey, but see, here's the thing. She's a scientific nun, so it doesn't That's matter. right. She's, she's really a good nun. She's actually a good... She's good. She's good at being a human because she's looking at both sides. Of the booty. I mean... I mean, of the planet. Whatever. I mean, that's oh. chill. <laughs> so... I thought we were going to talk about that some more. Okay. Probably shouldn't. <laughs> what happened last time in Dungeons and Dragons, Bree? Do you remember at all? I have no idea. I know that I was awesome, and that's about it. They're on a boat, because that's kind of the thing right now. They're Look going at up. us, we're on a boat. With T-Pain? Yes. Always bring T-Pain. <laughs> Don't bring your other friend. Fuck that guy. <laughs> um, and they ended up on an island that was called the Island of Madness. So they thought, eh, we're crazy bastards, let's go there. They found a bunch of the fish guys, Kutoa. They're basically like Murlocs from World of Warcraft. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I do remember the Kutoa. And they were all nuts and talking something about how they got to do a sacrifice. Well, they weren't really messing with the party. and They were all just kind of sitting around playing with their own poop or whatever they is they do in it crazy. So the, the group checked out the island and they found a little alcove where there was a bunch of dead body, like skeletons of Kutoa and stuff. So it looks like somebody was killing or sacrificing something. What the party doesn't know and never found out was actually there's a kraken under the water there that comes back every once in a while. If they'd lingered on the beach too long, they would have been attacked by a kraken. I'm happy we left because they yeah. always die when there's krakens. She didn't. They didn't uh, stick around. They went to the top of the island where the Kuotoa had spread a bunch of treasure around it sort of like suffocation. I remember. And in the center was a stone. And if you got too close to the stone, it would drive you insane. 
Unfortunately for me, everybody made their damn will saves, even the ones that suck at will saves, so nobody went crazy. What you get? Oh, yeah, uh, we replaced the Ranger with T-Pain, apparently. Tony, uh, who played the Ranger before he moved. Yeah, we replaced him. We replaced him, apparently, with T-Pain. Yeah, we're going to change it on his character sheet, T-Pain. Yeah. We're still going to let him play with us, too. Um, so, when they went up and started messing with the stone, turns out, actually, that the stone was touched by some demi demigod of Magnus or something a long time ago. Well, the Kutoa didn't really like them hanging out in their holy spot, so then the party had to wipe out the crazy-ass fish people. I told them that we should just kill them when we got there. And then we could have had all that treasure. You guys took the treasure anyways. You killed them and took the treasure anyways. I know, but we would have just done that from the jump. It would have been easier. That's not very nice. Yeah. So, they had to kill a bunch of crazy fish people. They got a bunch of loot and sailed off the high seas to more adventure. To kill probably more fish people. Probably they eventually. probably listen to me, and I'm going to probably say it when we get there. We should kill these guys. They're going to be evil. And they're going to be like, yeah, they're our friends. And then they're going to turn on us and go mad and try to kill us. Fish Not people always. are never nice. That's what I'm saying. Well, so, uh, yep. I uh, probably got a couple, like, uh, plenty of money and a couple of spell scrolls and uh, I think like a magic dagger or some crap. Nothing like super great for the, considering the party is all like 15, 16, 70 levels. So they're all pretty high up there. So I'm not on my saucer. They are pretty much, unless they find something really, really cool, they're pretty much kitted out exactly how they're probably going to be, I mean, later on. They've are, all already got a bunch of cool gear, so. Um, somebody wants to know how you have sex with a mermaid. Well, see, since mermaid's bottom part is fish... You do it like you do a fish. Unfortunately, your bottom part's not fish. So it's all handies, booby jobs, and mouth jobs. That's what you get. Or if it's got the fish part on top. Then it's gross. And you like kiss her and she's like halfway down your no, body. No, you just don't kiss her. That's like the, the definition of like a quadruple bagger with a side of lemon pledge for the yep. fish odor. Yep. Don't keep your mouth closed. I think I'd be happier with the other way around and having the hot body and just dealing with what we got rather than dealing with fish head all the time. Yeah, because I mean, I feel like she'd be really hot if she's a mermaid. You know, you couldn't have like actual penetrative sex with that weird fish parts of it without harming them. There's other places you can put it, and she'll be happy to help. Like yeah. And mermaids always have big boobies. They just mush together a little bit. Orifices, it's important. See, you can figure it out. It's science, man. <laughs> Sex is science. Protect right. yourselves, guys. We're I mean, <laughs> yes, not like you're going to be having like kids with a fish person unless she's going to like suck it and spit it but on her eggs. But still, protect yourselves, guys. Condoms are good. Dental dams, all of it. <laughs> just get a just get a just get a flashlight shaped like a mermaid. It's the safest way. Yeah, that's probably better for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to leave on that. <laughs> as horrible as that is, is everybody Google's on the internet as we speak. <laughs> It ends up with the dinosaur-shaped one or whatever, you know. They're going to be mad because they were like, they said it was real and it's not. It's not. Although there is one I've seen that is shaped like a crucifix that just ends in like a penis. Jesus on everything. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's sacrilegious, actually, technically. Yeah, but there's plenty of people out there who'd be all about yeah. being sacrilegious. Yeah, so dirty and sacrilegious. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. you know there's a market. Yeah, there's there actually is. plenty of YouTube groups with... <laughs> Hey, so when you get that date at lunchtime, remember to bring that with you for, for it. Either way, if she like really likes Jesus, you just make sure to hold the dick part so you can see it. And if she likes to be fucked by Jesus, I mean, there you go. There you go. It's a, it's a, it's a winner. That's naughty. You shouldn't say words like that on the internet. Yeah, we probably shouldn't do that. We're sorry. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, James, that's... Do you see so to stick your name on this? I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> Bree? Okay, there you go. Maybe? She's, she's, she's called it. Her name's Bree. Don't trust her. Uh, well, I'll do try. Whatever. <laughs> so, uh, you know, as always, check me out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Google Plus, everywhere. everywhere but MySpace. The James Show Zero Zero. Email me, uh, James at the James Show. So, until next time, uh, quit thinking about those mermaids and stop going on websites you shouldn't be at work. Yes. See you next time. Yeah.